In other news, I'm looking, reading right now, that DMX's family is fighting over his estate, which is worth $50,000. You know what's wild about this? Is this man has grossed so much money in the industry. This man sold 70-something million records. He been in Hollywood films. But yet, his estate is only worth $50,000. He's an icon. DMX is an icon. He's one of the biggest stars in the world. But how did this happen? See, number one, and I love X. I love X to death. He's, he's in my top ten. But considering that time period where after he left Def Jam, he wasn't really putting out much music. That played a role. He wasn't really churning in a lot of big time hits like he was in his prime. So he basically got more deep into drugs and more deep into drinking. Then he started going to jail in and out. Then he started going into the IRS. The IR he had to do time for the IRS. I mean, a lot of that stuff from lawyer fees to the IRS to child support. All that stuff tears, tears your wealth down quick. And not to mention this guy had 15 kids, man. 15 kids. 15 kids to support. So anytime that X was probably making $1, either child support or the IRS was taking 10. And that probably put a workload on him as well. That probably stressed him out as well. But one thing about people that had drug problems is that anything could trigger it. Who knows, man? This probably could have triggered X to go back into his old habits. Because knowing the reality of you having to get back to work, whenever it be putting out an album, whatever it be going back on tour. Oh, yeah, not to mention that the touring money didn't dried up heavily since the COVID. So... It was really putting a limit on what X could really do. I mean, the catalogs, the the verses was was good for him. It reintroduced his music to a new era of fans, but the tour money start slowing up. Like I explained in the Ice Cube video, songs were now owned by different publishing companies, and being that a lot of these labels done either went under or. They got sold to the high, to a high bidder. It's like now, a lot of that money is being hidden. And now who's getting it? That's the question. That's probably why he re-signed with Dev Jam. To hopefully recoup. Because he couldn't really do it independent. Dev Jam gave him promotion. Dev Jam cut a lot of costs. He needed a major. But... Even if this album, when it comes out, was going to do good, he still would have to go hard, like really hard. So, it also goes to show, man, that he was he was one of those guys that didn't really care too much about the finances, but more so his art. So, I'm going to simulate Tupac in a way. Because when Tupac left this earth, his finances was a mess as well. But these guys here, they gave their heart and soul into creating timeless music. And that, but at the same time, the bad part about it was they abandoned the business aspect and it left everything such in turmoil. So now, DMX's estate, which should have been in the billions, based off the work he's put in, off the albums he sold, based off the merchandise he sold, based off the movies he's been in, the features, it should have been top dad, but lawyer fees, the IRS, child support, all that stuff, jail time, all that stuff, lawsuits, ain't been doing it for 20 years, plus drugs, shoot, but rest in peace DMX, man, I'm hoping that they can get this situation solved in order, and his legacy can live on, so... 
That's my thoughts about that. Let me know what y'all think, Holly.